Well, it's understandable why they had nothing more to say. I think they pretty much said it all. I think, uh, just to remind you that our practice is that questions should be written out. Why don't you write out your questions and pass them to the aisles and we'll have them picked up either way. And if we can get someone from the back just to come forward, pick up the questions. I think both families have done a wonderful job and really teaches that hope and persistence, caring and, and love went out. And uh, we're waiting for some, as we're waiting for questions. Can we have someone pick up the questions over here? Uh, are there any questions on this side of the room? Do we have some there? There we go. There we go. Okay, we have... Uh, thank you, Olivia. Okay. We have a okay. question for Corey. Were you a walk away? Oh, actually, we have microphones. Uh, well. I'll just I'll just stand up. I know I was not a walk away. I went through an exit counseling. To the gross walls, are you getting harassed by Scientology? And if so, uh, how are you dealing with it? <coughs> what do you got? Not yet. We have a policy that every harassment results in 10 free talks by the gross walls on Scientology. <laughs> Uh, okay. The question, the next question has to do about older people such as a dentist uh, or other professionals who become involved in Scientology. Do you have any ideas of uh, how they might get out? I suppose it means how you might get them out. Um, I'm not an exit counselor, I'm a parent. I do sell dental supplies. <laughs> and I've seen that this go into this group. It's unbelievable. Uh, the family has to do the same thing. Just, just rally around, get as much support as you can, try to keep a line of communications open, and uh, just keep trying. In each case, you know, it's just like with us, each case is different. I wouldn't recommend our method for everybody. We had a special situation. We caught it early. We had a very bonding family right from the beginning. And it worked. I don't know that it would work with everybody. I think you have to look at each situation, but dentists do come out. I also must tell you, there are dentists who go in and love it, and truly love it, because they were s scams before they got in, and now Scientology taught them how to cheat the public even more. So that's a big problem. Actually, Cora is going to answer this next question because it's sort of complicated, but why don't you just read the question and then you can go through it. Okay. Um, it says, why did you, like my family, have to change your phone number and get an unlisted number. My cult tried desperately to contact me via phone calls, letters, visits, etc., etc. Um, and I had a lawyer send a registered letter to three members of the cult to stop contact with me due to pending litigation. Um, I changed my phone number and got an unlisted phone number, um, not really having anything to do with Church Universal and Triumphant, but actually having to do with uh, Church of Scientology getting harassing calls from them. Um, and, you know, frankly, now having a, an unlisted phone number, I wish that I had had an unlisted phone number all my life because it makes things a lot easier. I don't get a lot of sales calls. Um, and I, I don't know uh, really how... The, um, in terms of um, the cult trying to contact a person, um, it, the, I, you know, I really basically ignore all of that kind of stuff. If people try to contact me in the cult, I don't really want to have anything to do with them, and I don't have anything to say to them, and I basically tell them that. And fortunately, they then leave me alone.
Uh, this question points out that both families are fortunate enough to have uh, understanding and cooperation from everyone, mother, father, siblings. The question is, what do you suggest when parents and the balance of the family don't want to get involved? Well, I don't know why I took the microphone because I don't really know the answer to that. But I'm just going to say we've had a similar problem like that, you know, on Long Island. This family called us. It's not Scientology related, but it's it's a different cult. But they called us for help, and the uncle is doing all the work because you know the mother is in that case, and the father is is not present, and and the family is just not united. And you know we're doing the best we can to give them the information about the cult and explain everything and and, and they, they did get the, the kid to, to leave the group but his head is still in the group's mindset and you know we don't know what to do because now that he's out of the group he's back in, in sort of a dysfunctional family again it, it makes a very difficult problem I, I, I think you need professional help on top of you know in a case like this you would need professional help on top of the exit counselors I mean we can help provide information about cults but when you've got a family dynamics that aren't healthy, then you need a psychiatrist or a social worker or somebody who's more qualified to deal with that. I don't know if anybody else has. I have, I have nothing really to add, except I know how difficult it was for us with a family that was, we didn't have to explain it to anybody. I mean, we just looked at it. And the attitude of our family was, well, maybe it's not so, but we've got to get them out, and then we'll find out what's so and isn't so. Uh, I don't know how anybody does this without cooperation. I really don't. I, I think it's, it was so hard for us. I, I applaud people who try, and I'm sure there's ways because it happens. So you just got to keep trying, keep trying. Just take uh, a list of your resources, what you have, uh, uncles, relatives, friends, and then use them. Some, sometimes you might even have to get parents who are separated or divorced working for the benefit of the child. If they both have an interest in the child and work together, at least to get the child out 